Well, hello, hello, hello. I am Matt Williamson. It is Wednesday. I just finished my last three-hour show of The Drive for Steelers.com. Um, we are getting on a plane about this time tomorrow. Be home late Thursday night. So Thursday, I am unable to record. So this is going to be my fourth of five podcasts for the week. And to be honest, there's not much news today. <clears throat> around the league or surrounding the Steelers. Because frankly, all the people that make all the decisions, sort of like me, but I'm not one of those, obviously, are traveling right now. They're coming back to and from the uh, the owners meeting. So the, when you know the schedule of the, of the league, you can figure out when things are going to happen. Uh, Calais Campbell signed with Atlanta. I mean, that's a nice pickup for them. Um, leadership still plays well. Wouldn't have broke my heart to see him in Pittsburgh, but oh well. Um, so I came up with a list of... I still think there's going to be a fair amount of moves. I mean, of course, Rodgers, Lamar, things like that before the draft and maybe one or two for the Steelers. Um, let's start there because I wanted to talk about guys that might be traded around the league and should the Steelers have any interest in those dudes. But first of all, and no one told me this or it's not like top secret information or Williamson dug up some dirt. I think Bud Dupree or someone very similar to him as an outside third edge guy will be signed in the next two, three weeks pre-draft. It's a really good edge class, but I think you'd rather have a veteran there, uh, a good scheme fit. Uh, I think you'd like to eliminate edge from your draft needs just to focus on tackle, corner, D-tackle, linebacker, whatever. So I think that Bud is the obvious candidate, and it's always hard for me to comment on health, but I think he's probably going to be a stealer. And again, no one's telling me that. It's just a hunch and some people kind of thinking that there's a real good chance of it, and maybe even in the next couple of days. If not, maybe they could get a Justin Houston or somebody along those lines. But I think that's the next shoe to drop is just my educated guess. Um, and I'm fine with it. Uh, assuming injuries aside and the contract is very stealer favorable, which I think at this point it would be. Uh, and you may even see those three on the field together. Gives them another nice new wrinkle as well as some, ins some insurance and in, in, you know, Watt insurance. I think Highsmith gets extended. So that's my projection at the outside linebacker position. Watt, Highsmith with an extension probably in training camp. Bud Dupree or somebody like him. Jameer Jones. And you're probably done. You know, unless Roche blows you away in camp. Uh, and he might he might make you want to keep five or put Jameer Jones's uh, situation in jeopardy uh, or even, uh, you know, if somebody gets hurt, maybe Roche is that fourth guy then. So that's my hunch how that's going to work out. Um, in the second segment of the we'll talk about guys around the league that could be traded. But I found this nugget on Jalen Warren which is good and bad. I just want to kind of read it for you verbatim. And it comes from a fantasy site. And it's not a real ringing endorsement of Najee, but it is a ringing endorsement of Jalen Warren. So let me just read this off and then I'll react it to you. So by nearly every measure, Warren was a more effect effective runner and pass catcher than backfield mate Najee Harris in 2022. Warren's explosiveness, he had a breakaway rate of 25% compared to 13% for Harris, eventually forced Steelers coaches to give him more run as the season wore on. Warren saw 22% of the team's rushes over the second half of the season. So another next here is Warren was ninth among all running backs in yards before contact per rush. And third, an evasion rate, which I don't know exactly where that's coming from, uh, trailing only Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs. So I assume it's kind of like an elusive rate thing that, you know, making tacklers miss either by running them over, breaking arm tackles, eluding them. But he's only behind Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs. That's pretty darn good company. 14% of his rushing attempts went for 10 or more yards far higher than rates of Harris of 7.2%. So my reaction to that is I'm not surprised. You know, I've been talking explosions forever. Neither one's hitting 20, 30 yarders all that much. But I also think Warren's role as Robin is a lot easier than Harris's role as Batman. I also think Harris, especially to begin the season, was far from healthy and 
lumbering early on. Um, and Warren was fresh and frankly is very good. You know, I'm trying to give Warren a compliment here and I'm not necessarily bringing Harris down. He is what he is. Harris is a pounder. He's a little more monotone than I would like. Um, but he got better as the season went on. And I think Warren is just really a find, you know, that deserves everything he gets. So, all right, I'll be back with a list of guys around the league that could get traded. One or two of them I have a little interest in for the Steelers. All right, players that could get traded. Jerry Judy. A little torn on this. So, he, it's almost time for teams around the league to pick up fifth year options. That doesn't apply to the Steelers because four years ago, this is the Joe Burrow draft. They didn't have a first round pick, so they don't have any anything lingering this year. This, this up for in terms of picking up fifth year options of former first round picks. So the Broncos are kind of probably torn right now. Like they have until May 1st. If they pick up Judy's fifth year option, it costs them just a smidge under 13 million. So if you were to trade for Jerry Judy, he's 13 million for this year, costs you some kind of pick from the Broncos, and you'd have to extend him probably at least 13 million. He's very slot capable. I think he's still a very good player. I think the end of the last season, he started to really break out and play exceptional football. <sighs> That's a lot of stuff to give up, though. I mean, it's $13 million in cap space this year. Free agent after the year, you'd have to try to extend them if you're making the deal. And I bet Denver asked for a third-round pick. If it's a fourth, I'm considering it. And then I'm just not drafting receiver, of course. <sighs> in the end, it's probably not worth it. He's been injured. He's been inconsistent. I still am a believer though. So I could kind of be convinced either way. I at least would give Denver a call if I were the Steelers and say, what's it going to cost me? And I'd call Judy's agent and say, if we were to pick up the fifth year option and or extend him a year or two, what neighborhood are you looking for? And it's a risky move because he could pay off Way more than that. I mean, he could be worth, example, they pick up his fifth-year option. They give him $13 million in Denver. Peyton uses him as a number one receiver. If all those things would happen and he would at the open market next year, he might be $22 million, $20 million, you know, in that neighborhood. If, if he fulfills his – and you might get him at 15 you know, if you traded for him. So that one's on the fence for me, but I have some interest. Um, next up, again, there's some big name dudes I think that could move. I think Ryan Tannehill could definitely get traded. Uh, I think the Titans, and we're talking about them a couple times here, are totally rebuilding. And I think there's a chance they trade for trade Lance and go with Lance and Malik Willis. And I think some of their other high priced guys are on this list. I mean, the Steelers don't have any interest in Ryan Tannehill, but he's a quarterback that absolutely could move. Another quarterback who I absolutely believe could move but is not particularly healthy and would be hard to invest in right now is Matthew Stafford. Uh, he does not apply to the Steelers, but a team, maybe the Ravens, could go get Tannehill or Stafford if Lamar ends up going somewhere else. Um, Miami Dolphins, Cedric Wilson. He's the Steelers' Cedric Wilson's uh, son. He signed a bad deal with Miami to be their third receiver. I think he gets cut I might be interested in him for a third receiver spot for the Steelers, not in trade, not on a three-year, $22 million deal that he signed a year ago. But if he were to get totally cut on the open market, bring him in here for a one-year deal, you know, pay him as a third receiver, maybe, but he doesn't really move the needle for me. I think Zadarius Smith is either going to get cut or uh, traded by the Vikings. They added Mac Marcus Davenport. They have De Daniel Hunter. Um, he would be a perfect guy if he's in the Bud Dupree situation. Gets cut, looming out there, edge player, nasty, has some injuries, sign him on a one-year deal. He can also kick inside and rush over the guard. I would not trade for him, I don't think. It would have to be a late-round pick, 
But he's sort of in that mold, the more I think about of how he opened the show, of that edge dude that's been around the block, that has some nastiness to him. That would be a very welcome addition here. But I would much rather allow him to get cut, call his agent immediately and say, hey, what do you need? Um, I think the Bengals, Jonah Williams, obviously is not coming here. They're not going to trade him in, in division. Um, they've already said that he is not going to be their left tackle. That's Orlando Brown. He's going to go to the right side. He wants out. He wants to be a left tackle. I bet the Bengals trade him for something. Um, that's not very Steeler related, though. I think Clyde Edwards Hilaire could absolutely get traded. Not for me, though. Uh, I think that he would be an interesting third option here with the Steelers, but doesn't play special teams. Uh, he's not that good of a receiver. He's not an every down back. He's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none, and basically a bust. Now, here's the interesting one. Kevin Byard, safety Titans. Titans are blowing it up. They're trying to get everything they can. They asked Kevin Byard to take a pay cut. He said, no, I don't blame him. I think he's a top five safety. He's not as strong. I don't think the Steelers care as much about free and strong as they used to. Minka is one of the only safeties in the league that I think is better than Kevin Byard. Uh, he's 29 or 30 years old. He's set. He's right now. He's making 13.6 million this year, 13.6 million next year, and he's worth it. Um, so you would get those two years out of Byard. Send him on his way. Third round pick, maybe less, because think about Jalen Ramsey trade. Jalen Ramsey's worth a lot more than Kevin Byard. He's a corner. He's a little younger. I think he's younger. I'm not sure about that. Um, and the Rams get or the Dolphins gave up a third and a young tight end who's not worth much. Hunter Hunter Long. Byard is cheaper than that, in my opinion, at basically 14 million a year for the next two years. That would really be an addition that is really could make this one of the best defenses in the league. So I would have some interest there. Um, I mentioned Trey Lance. I think there's a good chance he gets traded. Obviously, that's not relevant to the Steelers. But how about the division rival um, Ravens? Like if you were to trade Lamar to the Colts, I would call the Niners immediately about Lance and try to run a similar style. I mentioned Lamar and Rodgers. Everyone knows where they're at right now. I think DeAndre Hopkins will absolutely get traded. I'm not interested for the Steelers. Still a good player, old, expensive. Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler could all be on the move. Dalvin Cook, even Joe Mixon, to be honest with you, they're all about the same age. Eckler's still really, really good. I thought Cook took a step back last year. I thought Mixon took a step back. Henry fits the mold of Titans dumping dudes. Um, again, none for the Steelers. You're not going to invest in a, an expensive former star running back or Ezekiel Elliott or Fournette or any of those dudes. I think Corey Davis, now that the Jets have been going crazy at wide receiver, absolutely won't be a Jet. I think there's a strong chance he is part of the um, Packers trade with Aaron Rodgers. If not, and if he gets cut to make room for Rodgers, Packers don't want his contract or whatever, and he's on the open market. I would be interested for the Steelers. One-year deal, two-year deal. The Jets overpaid him from the beginning. Doesn't mean he's a bad player. Um, I think he'd be a great number three here. Doesn't do a ton of slot work, though, so that part's not ideal. Uh, Judy's uh, partner in crime here, Cortland Sutton, is supposedly also on the block. He doesn't really attract me because I think you'd have to give up something substantial for him. Not real explosive. Big power player. He's fine, but he doesn't really excite me either. A um, couple other names out there. Allen Robinson from the Rams. No, he was horrendous last year and he's expensive, but you could get him for nothing. Hunter Renfro from the Raiders. I was actually just talking to some Raiders people here, you know, at the, uh, they were still doing their radio shows and they really don't think Renfro is available. They think that the Waller trade makes Renfro a keeper for them. Uh, I immediately thought when they signed Jacoby Myers, maybe they would trade Renfro, who would be a nice slot here. But they gave him a big contract, so I don't think I want to pay him and pay for him in draft picks. And Emmanuel Ogba is another name from the linebacker. You know, he's, they call him a linebacker. He's an edge. Older dude, tough. Dolphins right now, expensive. They don't have a lot of cap space. So if he were to get cut or 
He would also fit the Bud Dupree mold for me. You know, big power, more of a 4-3 end, but can stand up. Um, so Ogba, Bud, Darius Smith, if you could add any of those dudes – at a minimal cost at this stage of their career. They're all really big and physical, a little bit different variety than the the edge defenders you have right now. Those are dudes I would have interest in. Not going to give you much for him. I mean, I'm, I'm giving you a seventh round pick and taking him up his contract or waiting till he gets cut. But those are names to know. Again, I think an edge player will be signed before the draft. So, all right, that's a wrap. We will talk soon. Over and out.